All right, so it is 6.33 p.m. on Tuesday, September 8th, and I am calling the Board of Selectmen meeting to order. This meeting is being recorded. Um, notes are being taken by Gail Hunter. Um, and I think what we may do is uh, mute one or two people to make sure we're not getting um, feedback. All right, so um, <clears throat> let's see, this is our first meeting using uh, Zoom as the uh, platform. Um, <clears throat> I hope it works out better than our, our previous software packages. Um, uh, so the first item on the agenda is actually a public hearing that was posted a while ago for an entertainment license. However, the applicant has withdrawn that license application, so we will be passing uh, that hearing over. He's now making emotional reunions. <laughs> so, um, good idea for people when they sign in to mute themselves. We'll be changing the settings on the next meeting so that uh, when people come in, they're automatically muted. Um, okay. Uh, the second item on the agenda are committee interviews, one for um, uh, Lee Shar for the Sustainability Committee. Um, but Lee uh, has a conflict tonight, um, she, so she won't be able to make it. Um, we, we seem to be having bad luck interviewing her, but with um, some sustained effort, we will uh, get around to it. So we'll be trying to bring her back in for the next meeting. Bad, bad pun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, and the, we're also interviewing um, uh, an oldie but a goodie, um, uh, Mr. Tom uh, Coho. Keho. Keho. Ke Keho. Is that? Did I get that right, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, you did. Okay, all right. So uh, for the Seaside One um, uh, uh, Committee, Mr. Kehoe, if you would uh, uh, introduce yourself to uh, uh, everybody in the world and tell us a little bit about yourself and we'll uh, get that. Yeah, well, my name's Tom Kehoe. I'm interested in serving on the Seaside One Committee. Uh, my history with Seaside One goes back to the point when um, the Peabody Essex Museum was not taking very good care of our two pieces of apparatus in the 1970s and the fire department went up and got them back. Um, then we just had to find a, find a place to store them for a few years. Um, and what, once the new, uh, once the uh, museum was opened up, we moved those right in. Um, I was also involved in the um, committee that put the cupola on top of Seaside One and uh, of uh, a, lo a long history, shall we say, of going back with the fire apparatus and the equipment um, and would like to be able to put my knowledge and my skills to work with the other people on the committee. Um, just as a side note, my, uh, my grandfather went to the Great Salem Fire in 1914 with the steamer. Oh, wow. So that's not me, that's my grandfather. <laughs> also Tom Kia. What, Beck? Was his name also Tom? His name was James. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, so uh, do we have any other uh, questions or comments from board members? For this fine applicant. Well, I would object to this this applicant uh, on the grounds that he's overqualified for the position. Um, <laughs> but uh, I think that uh, I think that he'll do a good job, and um, and if and if he doesn't, we can always reconsider. <laughs> yeah, and I think the Seaside One Committee be, will take a probably a larger role than uh, in the past, especially as the historical museum moves out of responsibility for various activities in, uh, in maintaining that building as well. So a little more pressure on Tom, not that he's not used to it. 
I already asked my one question. Hmm. Well, you um, asked him whether he had time to serve. <laughs> <laughs> I we don't need to worry about this one. Yeah. <clears throat> Apparently. Okay. Well, we could um, kick this this particular uh, softball around all night long. Um, so, can I get a motion to approve uh, Tom Kehoe to the Seaside One Committee for a three-year term? So moved. Second. Oh, there's Ann. Hi, Ann. Uh -huh. How are you? All right. Uh, any discussion? All in favor, roll call vote. Ms. Harrison? Yes. Ms. Jakes? Yes. Mr. Bodmer Turner? Yes. Mr. Round? Yes. Mr. Bowling votes yes. And we're stuck with Tom for another three years on something anyway. <laughs> well, we could fire him, I suppose. Nah, yeah, we'll leave him there. Thank you so much. Mr. Kehoe, thank you very thank much. Thank you, Tom. Always a pleasure. Yep. Thank you, Tom. Unfortunately, I have other things to do this evening. I would love to stay and listen to your meeting, but have a good meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Mm -hmm. Okay. Bye, Tom. All right. Um, next item on the agenda is um, uh, speed limits discussion. So, um, Greg, do you want to tee this up? up? Greg is muted. He is muted. Hey, Sorry, I did that. Um, so I'm happy to do so, or, or Jeff can also start us off. Jeff did a nice um, spreadsheet for us, just listing the different um, categories of changes that are um, on tap. And um, uh, we met with the, uh, some staff and police department and reviewed the list. And we were able to uh, just do a little bit of fine tuning, but we had most of it uh, down right, and he's, he's amended it a bit. So it outlines the, the three different areas. So we have the creation of, um, of, of multiple but smaller safety zones. So recall that currently we have a large uh, sort of global safety zone encompassing most of the village area, mile radius from the train station. Um, and that is a little, uh, little too broad for the, for the state's liking. They like to be a little more specific and more detailed. Um, and so we have broken out um, a number mm -hmm. of proposed safety zones instead of the one large one. And, and then you move on to um, areas where the speed limit would revert to the uh, 25 mile an hour uh, general um, stipulation, which is the town wide speed limit, um, taking out a few uh, roads, the three roads um, out of the 20 and converting it, uh, changing it back to the 25. And then there are a couple of um, uh, proposed study zones. We, we already have the 15 mile an hour zone that's on the books in, um, in the village on, on bridge from, from, I'm sorry, on beach from top, top of the hill from Union down to Tappan. Um, so that would remain. Uh, there has been discussion about expanding uh, the 15 mile an hour zone to uh, include uh, Bridge Street, uh, you know, central and parts of Bridge. Um, still some, some discussion and debate on that as to whether or not uh, it's wise to go forward. We, at a minimum, we probably should do, and we've already started, uh, some uh, monitoring of speeds what we don't want to have happen is petition the state for a, a slower speed and then find out that the engineering study uh, would recommend a higher speed uh, because you're required to take the 85th percentile speed um, as, your, as your speed limit. Um, so we want to uh, proceed slowly on that if we are to go for um, uh, Jeff, you want to have, uh, add some other comments? Uh, yes, a couple of comments on um, the sheet that was included in the packet, which is an older version. Um, there's a mistake on 
um, the Pine Street entry, uh, the uh, zone actually begins at Bridge Street and goes for one half mile from there to um, basically to Woodholm, not to uh, Parsons Lane. Currently, it's marked um, 20 all the way out to Parsons Lane, but in discussions with Todd, um, that was a mistake and it should only be going out as far as Woodholm and then turn 25 in the area around Woodholm. Um, the second thing is that you were commenting on the 15 mile an hour zone in the village um, and in the notes um, and comments, it says that there are no 15 mile an hour signs left in the village. All that we have in the village are 20 mile an hour signs. So that 15 mile an hour zone, which is what the state has allowed us to have um, after an engineering study, um, has disappeared into 20 mile an hour signs um, and is not marked at all as, as 15 miles an hour. And I don't know, Greg, whether you saw Todd's um, uh, report of the study. Um, I, I have not looked at it yet. I did. I noted okay. that he did send it out this afternoon. I just haven't had a chance to look at it. Yeah, um, he uh, did a study on both Central and Union, and uh, and came up with. I'm trying to see if I can grab it here. Um, came up with. Uh, there it is. Uh, came up with speeds uh, on Union Street. Uh, this would be from Pine to, excuse me, from, from on Union Street um, going down towards Tappan. Um, and in that area on Union Street that they took it, um, they had an average speed of 18.32 miles an hour. So that's below the 20 that it's currently marked and above the 15, but it's within within the ballpark of uh, most of the speed, speed zone studies that I've seen, the traffic studies that I've seen for um, people running over the speed limit. The speed limit in the area is marked as 20. So it's actually running a little bit under. Um, the Central Street study um, that was done was done further up um, uh, past Seaside One. Um, uh, not not past C sub one. Excuse me. Central Street study was done, and that study indicated that people were going 23 miles an hour, which is slightly over the mark 20. So, um, as people come into town, it seems like they slow down, and um, particularly on Union Street, um, but on Central Street, they're going a little bit faster. So. That's the information we have on that at this point. Um, whether we want to try and reinstitute or extend the uh, 15 mile an hour uh, zone. I don't know whether Todd's on this call or not. Um, whether he has any comments on that in terms of extending it. So the original proposal was to extend it, the 15 mile an hour zone um, all the way out uh, past Seaside went to where that study is being done, right? Is that correct? The original proposal was to have it start being 15 at Ashland. Right. So the current speed study doesn't seem to support that. No way they can pull that up. Um, well, at 15 miles an hour, the, the average speed right now is uh, is 23. So people are running a little bit faster than that. Um, there is the flashing uh, lighted sign that's um, just as you come to the top of the hill on Bridge Street. Um, just for Ashland, right? Yeah, right at Ashland. And that's, that's uh, marked as a, a 20 and um, so people are slowing down as they come to that, but not all the way to 20. Yeah. 
Is that average, Jeff? The speed's averaged out, so you have some people going good deal faster and some going more slowly? Uh, it is it is an average speed. It's not a median speed. We've been down that route before. Um, there were 47,800 vehicles um, that passed through between uh, September 1st and September 8th. And westbound, the speed was 23.50, and eastbound, the speed was 22.93, negligible amount in between the two. Um, similarly, in the other study that was done on Central, um, the westbound and eastbound were within uh, one mile an hour of each other. And it is an average speed, 18. Can you, can you tell me, Jeff, if um, how, how specifically was the study done? Was it done over um, several days and for a broad time range or I mean I, and I'm only asking because my personal experience has been that traffic coming towards downtown on Bridge Street is I have frequently see that sign um, saying in excess of 30 miles an hour. So I'm just curious how the study was done. Well, the study was done from the September 1st to September 8th till today. And um, that's why these results weren't out in your packet. They just came in this afternoon around 4.45 um, from Todd in an email to Greg and me. And how were they um, done? Was it, was it done with the tubes that... It was done with the tubes. Um, one, the, the central, the Union Street side had 50, almost 54,000 vehicles. Um, the uh, Central Street side had 47,800, almost 48,000 vehicles. Okay. I'm not sure where the vehicles went, whether they all turned onto School Street or not, but because <laughs> there's quite a difference between the two numbers. But those, that's, a, that's an incredibly large number of vehicles. So that average, Becky, I, I understand your concern is what's the range and and are people going a lot faster than that um, to, to cause that to be the average? Right. Um, my, my assumption would be when you had that number of vehicles that, um, that it's pretty close to. Uh, yeah, so the thing is the tubes are down by a little bit past Seaside 1, and that flashing sign is well, well up on the bridge, and there's yeah. a big long yeah. run in that's a straight line where mm -hmm. people are going pretty fast. They yep. see the sign, they start to slow down, and then by the time they get to Seaside 1 or the, the intersection of Pine and Central, mm -hmm. they've started to really slow down a lot more. Uh, the other thing is that the speed limit posted at the bottom of that hill right. um, is 30. Mm -hmm. So, and they, the, the sign starts picking people up at the top of the, of the hill going down toward a 30 mile an hour sign. So where, where are you talking about him? On Bridge Street heading from West Manchester into town, um, there is, oh God, I've forgotten the name of which thing that comes into the harbor, but at the bridge on Bridge Street, there's a 30 mile an hour sign. So you right, hit the right bottom. Where Bennett, hmm? right where Bennett comes out, right where the other end of Bennett comes out onto. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. so, and and bridge. it might, the first 20 mile an hour sign is approximately adjacent to the um, speed limit, speed sign. The first 20 mile an hour sign is the, is the lighted sign. Yeah, exactly. And then so, the next 20 mile an hour sign is just after Pine Street. Right. So maybe it would make sense not to worry too much about people approaching the, the flashing sign because they're coming from a 30 mile an hour zone and the sign is picking up people who are just approaching a 30 mile an hour sign. Or maybe it needs to be sorted out some other way. Well, at the risk of, of causing um, a major uproar in um, the town about parking, um, there are two parking spaces that people park in that are right next to that lighted sign. And, um, and when I've come through, it, it 
tends to, when cars are parked there, it tends to block the sign. Um, whether we need to hoist the sign up higher or, um, or, remove, or move the, it. Remove, the, remove those parking spaces. I didn't say that out loud, but. No, no, no. But <laughs> we could maybe move the sign uh, 50 or 60 feet into town, which where there are no parking spaces. Or perhaps farther out towards West Manchester. I mean, my concern, people are- You can't go further out because then it's the state highway. And we now, can't, where, where, we can't where, change that highway. All right, were the tubes placed anywhere other than down near Seaside One? Was that the only place? It was actually up from Seaside One. It was up from there, yes. It was, um, it was up above. Closer there. to Pine Street. Yeah. Okay, I, I, it's, it's, and again, uh, um, personal observation, just that the cars are zipping up to that sign. Um, and just, you know, just based on what I have seen this, the, the, the lighted sign saying. I mean, well, if we're, my concern being, if we're going to do a study, um, we should have a study that's going to to genuinely reflect um, the patterns and speeds we have at various points along the road. Well, um, so the, the engineering study, the methodology for that presumably would be prescribed by the state, right? Yeah. Um, uh, but the state doesn't have control over that portion of the highway. Yeah, but if we want to, I think, so let me roll back to what we, I think the, the objective is in this particular little section. It is, for this part, it is to see whether or not we want to pursue a 15 mile an hour zone. Is that correct? Correct. So, yeah. um, uh, part of the reason for doing this initial study is to see whether or not, if we did that, um, we would shoot ourselves in the foot because the state would find that we actually were uh, running speeds higher than um, uh, we were currently posting, like over 25 miles an hour. Say. Eli, I wish, I wish Todd were on the call, but I'm pretty sure that the state does not have control over the portion of 127 um, from the lighted sign to uh, school Street. I, I agree. However, if we wish to set a speed limit in of 15 miles an hour, we're still required to go to the state and give them an engineering study which shows <clears throat> that it is supported. We can't just uh, by fiat set it to 15 miles an hour. And um, uh, if the state finds that the engineering show, a study shows that the average speed is higher than what we, um, but than the 85th percentile of what we want as the speed limit, they won't allow it. Is that correct, Greg? That's, that's correct. And they could actually require you to set it at the 85th percentile speed. Right. 85th percentile of the current speed that we picked up um, on Central Street um, is 19, 19 and a half miles an hour. So it's at about 20, which is where we're at right now, right? Yeah. 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 The, the 85th percentile is 1955. Okay. Based, based on the 20. study that Todd just completed. Yep. Okay. So, so um, we wouldn't lose that much uh, than yeah. the state for uh, this, this request. Can you remind me exactly where the um, <clears throat> where the town road on Bridge Street starts and um, yeah, exactly where does the town road start? It starts at Ashland. It does start at Ashland. Okay, thank yes. you. And that Ashland corner is a slowing factor right off the bat because that's a fairly and that's quite a bend. Mm -hmm. it, it should be, but I, 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 I'm not, I'm not convinced. 
Eli, is my set, is my, am I lagging again? A little, a little bit, but not too bad. Um, not, okay. not, not as bad as normal, it's, it's workable. So, so is the, the uh, let's, let's talk about what the objective is here tonight um, with respect to uh, the little area that we're talking about right now. That's the, spe the, the section that's called the special study zone. Um, <clears throat> And the uh, suggestion, the, the objective was to see whether or not we could get a 15 mile an hour zone um, running from uh, essentially the intersection of, um, originally I thought it was from the intersection of Pine and Central uh, all the way over to Union and then down to Cabin Street. Is that still the objective or is, has that changed? We have a, an existing 15 mile an hour zone from School Street to Tappan Street. Right, but it was um, Todd's proposal to try to extend that, is my understanding. Well, we talked some about bringing 15 miles an hour out to this area that we're talking about um, from Ashland to school. Um, but uh, I, you know, I, I think that, that we're um, going to have a really hard time justifying that with the, with the state in terms of going down to 15. Um, right. and, and, you know, it's, it's hard to get people to go 15 miles an hour when the speed limit is set at 20. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but more importantly, what we've discussed in terms of um, the issues related to speed zones and a state study um, were um, out going out by the school um, on Summer Street and uh, out towards Sweeney. Um, and if you look at the very bottom of this chart in the comments section, um, it starts at Forest Street at 35. Um, and doesn't drop to 20 until just after Sweeney. Um, kind of just, just before you get to Bailey's um, or Gas by the Sea or whatever its current name is. Um, outbound, uh, there were no signs from Beach to Washington Street at all. Um, and then a 25 mile an hour sign just after you come around the curve on Washington Street. And then it goes up to 35 miles an hour just before you get to Sweeney. Mm -hmm. And the concern was that we have the school zone and we have um, kids in the park at Sweeney. And we can't drop that area because that's all state controlled on 127. But if we could get the state to at least, you know, move the 35 mile an hour zone out beyond Sweeney and start the 20 mile an hour zone on the, on the inbound side before Sweeney, that would be good. Um, and whether they'll drop it to 20s because it's a, a safety zone for the school and the park um, that's, that's really the question. That would be much more of a concern in terms of a state study um, than trying to get uh, the uh, Bridge Street area um, from Ashland to School Street down to 15. Right, so what's the, what is the suggestion for the Summer Street School Street zone? For, for the area I was just discussing? Yes. Um, well, we'd like, we'd like to have it um, marked coming out of the town uh, until you get to Washington Street. I mean, it's tough because you, 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 you want to have a zone that's at least a quarter of a mile long. Uh, I think that's actually state law. Um, so if you go up to 25, at Washington Street, you run right into the school zone immediately. Um, so 
most ideal would be to have it be 20 from Beach Street to Sweeney Park. In both directions. So um, is the proposal to um, uh, petition the state towards that end? Or is this just that uh, we need to do some more study in, uh, in order to make a plan? Um, do Jeff, do we, do we have any Todd, data? I wish Todd were on this call. <laughs> yeah, do, do we have any data on Summer I, Street I can, in that I area? Can get them on the call, but yeah. We can also put the tubes out there to, to collect some new data. I think, I think that collecting data, right. data um, for the area that I'm talking about, um, so um, around the cricket and, and then further out, um, out beyond uh, Lincoln Street, um, beyond the gas station, right where they have the signs changing now um, to, see, to see what kind of speeds we're seeing there now. Um, that might be useful for us to do um, if we could. Okay. So, so part of the plan for this- If he brings the A game, we're in good shape for Dennis to play Sasha in the semis. Let's hope they don't play another, look like a junior's match, those guys. George and Zavara, they were so tight. <laughs> Understandably, I guess, his so, um, opportunity is open there. But boy, that was a little 614245. Yep. All right. <laughs> Pat just jumped on, he said. I was just, I was just texting him. <laughs> Yep. Todd, Todd's in? Yep, he just jumped on. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Todd, we've been talking about um, the study that you just finished. Thank you for getting that data yep. to us. Yep. Um, and, um, and what the goal is for that area. Do we want to petition the state to go down to 15 in that area, which we have to do even though we have control over the road? because it's dropping down below um, safety zone standards. Well, I think on Central Street, if I remember correctly, it was 23 miles an hour or so, the average speed. Yes. So you, yeah. we're, we're kind of in that ballpark all, all, already, and I'm not sure they'll be willing to uh, you know, drop it to 15. Yeah. So, so that, that, you know, even if we go to 85th percentile of what we have, that's 19, 19.55 uh, miles an hour, which is right where we are in terms of how it's marked. I think they love it. Yeah, they said that, do you see that dog? I guess they, they yeah. Okay. Um, we were also talking about the other area that, that we had discussed with Greg um, of, uh, out by uh, the school zone and uh, and Sweeney. Todd, you still there? Or did we get him muted? Hang on. Todd? Nice. I'm not seeing his phone on there right now. No, I don't see his phone on there. He must have dropped off. Can you hear me now? Yep. I got you. Yep. Okay. Here we are. Yep. So, so we wanted uh, on Summer Street from basically Forest on uh, both directions inbound uh, 20 miles an hour because of the school and Sweeney Park. But I think that the state road ends at the 1661, or the town road ends at the 1661 cemetery, and we would have to petition the state for that. And, and Todd, we don't have any current data on speeds there? No, I don't have anything recent up there, uh, but we can definitely 
put the tubes back out there. And yeah. the other area where we were going to put it back is uh, uh, on Bridge Street between Central and Pine and, and Ashland. I uh, just got to find a good spot for that so no one parks on it because that would screw the uh, numbers up a little bit. Todd, uh, is there parking um, just town side of Ashland, right at that oh. curb there, by the Crosby's? Yeah, the, yeah. That's, that's resident parking only on the on the corner, all the way down to, down to the center of town. Boy. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So that is a legal parking spot on on that corner. It's something that we had discussed in the parking. Uh, uh, working group a couple of years ago to eliminate the parking on that corner, but uh, it was never brought forward. Yeah. Okay. So uh, trying to uh, uh, get to some conclusions here tonight. Uh, so it sounds like in, in this, the section of this document, the special study zone, sounds like we have a little bit more data that we want to or need to collect before we can um, uh, really uh, articulate some concrete steps that we want to take. Is that fair to say? I would I say think, yes, yeah. I, mm -hmm. I think we need to do the school zone area um, on Summer Street yeah. um, and going out towards Sweeney, if so, we can get, get yeah. two different marks there. Okay. Um, but currently that's all marked 2535. So um, we're not going to see low numbers there. I have a question regarding Pine Street. I don't know if it's the same situation on school, but I know that traffic routinely is going around 40 miles an hour on Pine Street right now. Um, is there any, Todd, is there ticketing being done right now out there? Where on Pine? Pine Street. Where on Pine Beck? Low, lower part? Um, well, it's it's from Crooked Lane to town. It's 20 miles an lower, hour all, all along. Lower part, there, lower part, yeah. Including from Crooked Lane. So, yeah, and I mean, I, I drive it to and from work and several times, and um, uh, it's I end up causing quite a pile up behind me when I'm doing the 20, 22 miles an hour. And I, I'm, it's, um, have we done speed limit checks on there recently? The, the proposal that, that we've discussed, Becky, is that that would go to 25, um, starting out at 128 mm -hmm. and um, all the way into the area of Woodholm. Right, I know that. Todd, t Todd dropped off, he's calling in again. But my concern is that, okay, so we raise it to 25. What are people going to be driving then? I mean, why, why post a speed if... Well, it was a mistake. Um, because the original plan was that it would be a half a mile from no, Pine Street out. That. Jeff, I, I understand that. I, I, and I know. I'm just saying that... Um, if we're going to post so speeds, then then what, you know, why post a speed if it's not going to be enforced? Well, so th these are these are two separate issues. The, the issues that we're trying to deal with, um, you know, in, in, in this pass with these steps that we're taking right now are to address the, the mistakes, the missteps that we made when we were doing these things okay. at 20 miles an hour. Um, so let's take the issue of enforcement and the policy of enforcement and, and not try to, to tackle that tonight. Okay, fair enough. Um, so the things that we can conclude tonight are um, the two sections of the document that said special regulation safety zones and the revert to 25 mile an hour. The special study zone is gonna require us to get a little bit more data and then <clears throat> Um, the uh, remaining question would be around the mitigation effort for mill and forest. But let's, let's, let's start with um, the um, special regulation safety zones and the re revert to 25 miles an hour. So the objective here is for us to say that we are um, ready to go with starting some 
uh, publicizing of these proposed changes to rectify the little mis missteps that we made um, in advance of a public hearing on those to actually put them in place. So um, if we could take those first two items um, uh, and then move on to trying to wrap up on the Mill Street um, uh, question uh, so we can move, move along tonight, I'd appreciate it. Okay, the very important thing is to uh, change the text that's in front of you, um, which is in a, an update of the spreadsheet. This is an older version, as I said, on Pine Street that, that should read Woodholm, not Parsons Lane. Got it. So other than that, are board members comfortable with us uh, starting to publicize those first two sections as changes that would become um, the subject of a public hearing in October. Eli Todd says he can't get in. He can't get back in. Uh -huh. Well, that's strange. Um, I do not know what to say there. Um, Todd trying to get back in. Yep. He is not in a waiting room. I disabled the waiting room. Right. All right, let's uh, um, proceed and, and see if he can get back in and maybe Tiffany can help him. To answer your question, um, Eli, yes, I agree with that. What you said about the two zones so far. Uh, and uh, Todd's back in. Okay, hey Todd. Yeah, I'm back. Okay. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Yeah, okay. Sorry about that. That's okay. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so what we were talking about was going ahead and, and uh, approving the public, public publicizing of the special regulatory <laughs> safety zones and the revert to 25 mile an hour section <laughs> with the modification that on the Pine Street um, side uh, line item in special regulation safety zones in the spreadsheet that we have, it says um, Parsons Lane where it should say Woodhall. <laughs> I move that we adopt that as a follow as as our position. Can I get a second? Second. second. Any discussion? All in favor, Mr. Round. Yes. Mr. Jakes. Um, I'd modify that to Mrs. But you know, yes. You know, I I, I realized a few seconds after I said it, <laughs> just blowing it. <laughs> just add an S, and we're good to go. Yes. Yep. Uh, now I'll get this one right, Mr. Bodmer Turner. That's what I was trying to say. Yes. Ms. Harrison. Yes. And Mr. Bowling votes yes. Um, thank you. Can I, uh, I'd like to ask one question of Greg or probably anybody. Um, are we limited to saying the signs have to be either 10 multiple bolts, the signs have to be multiples of five? Mm. I don't know if I've ever seen a sign other than that. I have right. <laughs> Anywhere. <laughs> yeah, I have too. And it catches your eye. Yes. Hmm. And are we allowed to paint speed limits on the road? Yeah. You're, yeah. Well, I don't know if it's part of the... Uh, the manual, the, uh, uh, there's a Bible for, <laughs> for road uh, signage and whatnot. I don't know if that is in there, but I can certainly find out. I'm just curious. It's kind of nice reminder. I, I, I've certainly seen it on, on roads. Uh, All right, so we'll, we'll get, um, get those information, they get that information and get back to you folks. Thank you. 
Um, can I ask about the uh, planning subgroups discussions around mitigation for mill and forest? Is that still underway? Yes. Okay, so we'll come back to that. That would be good. Yep. <clears throat> All right, anything else that we're going to cover on this? I want to move on. If uh, yeah, question, Eli. Can we, can we do anything to get a ball rolling on a study uh, out in that Summer Street area that uh, Jeff had mentioned and we had discussed? I think that's the next step. I think that's what they're going to do is they're going to go off and get that data. Okay, cause so, so that's in the, that, that can be in the works in the next couple We can of have weeks, that by, right? probably by the next meeting. Fine, good. All right, Todd? Yeah, I'm back in now. Do you think we could have the data on, on Summer Street by the next meeting? The 21st? Todd got kicked off again. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm sure I'm sure the answer I'm sure yeah. he'll say yes to that. He's here. He's here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the answer is yes to that. We can get that out and uh data back by the twenty first. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Awesome. Okay. Uh, if uh, board members are okay, I'm going to move on to um, uh, agenda item number four. Here we go. <clears throat> Outdoor dining, enclosed tents and heaters, um, uh, uh, request and callas, but in general, the topic of enclosed tents and heaters. So as we go into colder weather, um, we anticipate we're going to have um, potentially more of these, but we have a request from callas to, uh, to some extent, enclose the tent uh, in front of Calas uh, and install um, some sorts of heat uh, to take them through uh, some of the colder patches that we're about to uh, get into. Um, uh, they did some research. We did some research. Um, there was uh, a document put out by the state saying that you could enclose up to two sides for um, uh, tents used for um, schools and uh, anything more than that would represent an enclosed space. So the proposal is to put uh, uh, up to two transparent um, uh, walls uh, um, on the tent at uh, Calas, one on the long side parallel to the street and one on the downhill side where the wind blows in. Um, there were some discussions between the fire chief and um, uh, Calas um, and the <laughs> town uh, regarding heaters, which ones would be appropriate. Uh, we have not, um, I don't think there's final resolution on which type of heater um, can be used, which particular brand and model um, can be used. We were hoping that we would get that detail uh, buttoned up for tonight, but we don't have that, um, to my knowledge. And uh, Jason or and or Monica, you can um, correct me on that if there's been some movement since uh, this afternoon. Uh, no, I've been back and forth with the uh, fire inspector regarding um, the two heaters that were submitted to him, and we have yet to come uh, to find a solution to that problem. Uh, my, uh, my electrician, who will be doing the work to upgrade the to a 40 amp circuit to um, be sufficient to draw an, um, enough power for the heater um, is looking for something that would work. Um, it's difficult. To, we haven't been able to find anything that is, I think it's called a ULR rated for outdoor heating um, that would work under the tent as opposed to outside of the tent and forcing the air in. Okay, so um, uh, so the the steps here also are that the Board of Health is going to be reviewing uh, this on uh, their meeting on September 10th, which is Thursday. Uh, Thursday. Um, so um, the question is, do we want to, uh, do we have any questions, concerns, to, can, do we want to do a provisional um, uh, approval of the request pending uh, uh, finding of a suitable heating solution? Um, they can still enclose the two uh, walls regardless, even if they can't find the heating solution. Um, uh, 
uh, so I'd like to get um, uh, feedback from the board and a uh, short discussion here between uh, Monica and the board members. Questions or comments from board members? I have a couple of questions. Um, in the uh, notes that Monica, Monica you provided a tremendous amount of information and I appreciate that. Um, it makes it a lot easier to try and come to a quick conclusion on this. Um, but in your notes, you had a photo of the sidewalk area underneath the tent and a proposal to remove the chain in this area to allow more room for people to pass when necessary. I assume that you're talking about egress. So uh, that's kind of a, a side note that um, I wanted to be prepared to address because I know that there has been concern that the uh, pedestrian walkway that runs along um, the front facing um, side of Cal is where the sidewalk is, um, yes. has seemed congested at times. Um, and what we've done is reduce the size of that first table um, which is the image that you see there from right. a four top table to a two top table to try and uh, create as much room as possible. I think we're up to about four feet, um, maybe a few more inches than that. Um, but what my proposed, what, where that is, where that bottleneck is happening there, um, because that chain is there, there's more than six feet between the next table and that table. Um, it would be good if we could remove that chain and if, you know, two people were crossing, someone could just step, you know, one foot in between those tables while the passerby went rather than, you know, this congestion that's happening. Um, it, it's just a suggestion. I don't know how the town feels. We do have um, some locations that don't have chain barriers on the sidewalks at all. Um, I would leave the other chain barriers up um, just to kind of clearly mark and the chain barrier would again continue at that second table that you see in the picture where um, to the front door Cal is. That way we're not completely opening up the space but just creating um, a little bit more room at that end where, uh, where, where we're finding the problem. That looks like it's also a, um, a two seat table. Yeah. But you, you want to you want to contain you want to continue to have the chain next to that table, mm -hmm. but drop it on the, the uh, down street side on the, on the uh, side going towards the, the water? Yeah, just in that area so that there is room for one person to step aside while somebody else passes so that we don't have pedestrians, um, you know, getting too close to each other, essentially. In, in the process of writing up the, um, the uh, conditions for outside dining, way, way back two months ago yeah. in June. Um, I, I seem to recall that the state said that we had to have outside dining areas um, mark, demarked with chains all around them except for an entrance into the area. Um, mm -hmm. I went to look today for that information um, and I couldn't find it. Mm -hmm. um, so, because um, this runs against the whole issue of um, having enough egress um, if there's a problem underneath the tent that people get, can get out of there without having to trip over a chain. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, uh, I don't know how we, we handle the, con the conflict between the state saying that we have to have chains around dining areas and, um, and uh, and, and the egress issue. Um, so I thought that the reason that you're trying to drop the chain in there was because of egress. No, as um, far as I understand it, the, the egress that we have, even with the chain present, um, yeah. is, is still substantial enough. And if it isn't, uh, the next solution would be that the, the, the panels come in 20 foot sections. So even if it's a, it's a 30 foot long tent, um, actually, they come in 10 foot sections. So even if we want, needed to create another e egress, we could always leave a section open if, if um, you know, it was felt that there wasn't a, an easy way for people to get in and out in, a, in an emergency situation. But um, it, it is my understanding that without 
the other two walls on and with the pedestrian pass pathway there that you know um we meet we meet the needs um for um egress needed so the walls are going to run along the street side mm -hmm. um which is which is a boon to your customers so that they don't have to feel like a car is right there um and then along the downhill side of it uh going towards the curb but not quite reaching the curb is that correct yes okay um, I have some questions as well. Okay. When you're done, are you done, Jeff? I, or do I, I'm, I'm done. I'm not sure how to resolve this dilemma of the missing data on whether chains are required or not. Right. I seem so to recall to when you and I were doing that, Jeff, that it was the state guideline. Yep. Um, I'd have to go back and look that up as well. But, but um, one of my questions, um, and concerns regarding removing a portion of the chain um, is that um, as it is, while the tables may be six feet apart, the people when they're sitting at the table, I'm not sure how far apart they are, but if you've got people stepping into that area, then of course you've negated the, that aspect of social distance dining. Um, because so in regards to that, the, the, the chairs are actually six feet apart, not the tables. So it's, a, it's guest back to back. Um, uh, that's six feet apart. And as, and as far as um, somebody stepping in between that six feet um, of space for a moment, um, I mean, yes, yeah, six, uh, it, it wouldn't be something that would have to happen often. And um, as far as what the CDC guidelines are um, for, for close contact and, and the spread of COVID, it, you have to be within that s six feet for more than 15 minutes. The, um, well, it's, in any, I don't want to go into CDC. Yeah, we, right we could now, go into the whole. <laughs> right, I know. Um, but, but less, that is to me less of a concern and it's a really nice idea just to be able to allow people to step out of the, the walkway. Um, but one concern I would have would be if, if you, not you personally, but if we um, create more room, will people then be uh, walking up to friends tables and lingering around tables where they're not supposed to be? Um, our staff and all of our locations is, um, I don't want to say trained to police this, but, um, you know, it, it, it's very clearly understood that, that, that people need to be seated. They're not supposed to be going table to table. They're not supposed to be getting up. If they are up, they have to have a mask on. Um, and, you know, occasionally we run into um, somebody who's unhappy with that, rec you know, guidance from the staff. Yeah. But mo most people are, are very accommodating and, and understanding and just, you know. Good, I'm glad to hear that. That's you know, nice to know. Um, and then, I mean, because personally, I think it would be really nice for you all to be able to, um, if, if we're allowed to let Cal is in close some aspects of it. But one of the other concerns was the power supply, because you had mentioned that the fans had to be turned off because of an extension cord running. So where would the power for these be coming from? So the, the extension heater. cords that um, were put up with the fans were just not rated for outdoor use. Um, and the fans were not in good placement either. Um, and once that was brought to my attention and the chief's uh, attention, those, those have been taken down and removed. For the heater, it would have to be a temporary 40 amp circuit that's uh, wired out to the tent and um, just to avoid any tripping hazards that would run along the uh, tent posts and to wherever the, the placement of the heater ended up being. And how would it, but would it come from the building directly from the building itself, the power source? Yeah, we already have a power source that's there for the lights. So it would run along the same um, place where the lights is and it's, I probably over eight feet, if not 12 feet high. It starts oh, okay. at the, so the top above. of the, yeah. Okay, thank you. Because I see it in the picture. So I just, yeah. that's, thank Monica. you very much, Monica. Yeah. Okay, Monica, I have, I have a couple of questions on the panels. I assume that these are panels that 
will roll up or roll down depending upon weather conditions? Yep. So if it's a nice day, you'll roll them up? Um, I would Allegedly. think so. Yeah. Okay. All right. And uh, another question, and I assume that the side panel that you've got certainly does not go so far as to uh, impediment the uh, the walkthrough area. It only no, 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 it wouldn't extends, go that far. Extends to that. So here, here's a question. Um, you've got to have two sides out of four. Now, I understand most of the weather comes from down on the street, but occasionally it might come from up on the street. So are you going to have panels on either side and have one side down or the other, depending upon what the weather's doing? Uh, I hadn't thought that much into it. I mean, it, it, it could be something, but, um, you know, when we were there, we kind of talked about where most of the weather comes from and with the ocean being downhill, uh, just yeah. felt like most often what we're trying to do is block wind. So it, it'll, you know, my plan I, I, is to, I, to just have them there. I agree common sense is that way, but I'm just thinking you, you might want to do a same panel uphill and maybe that stays rolled up 90% of the time, but um, you never know. Well, yeah, it, it's a good idea in theory, but it's also very expensive. You you pay by the yeah. foot to rent these panels. <laughs> okay, all right. So I was just curious. So so you'll be flexible depending upon the weather and these will be up or down and mm -hmm. as it goes, yep. Uh, any other board members have any questions or comments? So just a comment, if I could, Eli, uh, regarding the, the chain in, in my case. So what the state asked for is that the, the area where, serve, where service is being provided be clearly defined. And typically that means, you know, chaining off all four sides. Um, in this case, you know, the three sides still have the chain and the building in essence um, is that fourth side in terms of defining the boundary. Um, so I, you probably would be still within the spirit of the law um, if you didn't require a chain along between the building and the tables. Um, just because I, it's, it's already defining that area pretty well. Obviously, it's a pedestrian area uh, between the building and that chain, but nonetheless, I think it would accomplish the, what the law is trying to, to do. All right, so uh, I will make the observation that uh, converting that uh, um, uh, one table at the end to a two top did, as far as I can tell, did in fact help the situation mm -hmm. out of that okay. quite a bit. Um, so, um, may I? So, uh, there's just, I don't want to make any kind of decision on this. Um, without the information from the Board of Health. And I think we need to have an agreement between the fire department and, and the restaurants that their plans for heaters are in fact going to be safe. And I understand the importance of, of hashing all of these issues out, but I don't think we're in a position to make any kind of decision. Agreed. Mm -hmm. I, I think we can be supportive of this idea and um, pending the Board of Health review. And the fire chiefs and put and the fire and the fire chiefs okay, uh, signing off. The, I mean, obviously, should, the fire chief has to sign off because he's the fire inspector. Yep. We should be the final board and not the preliminary board in this. Not that I'm saying we don't support the restaurants. We'd love to support the restaurants, but we need to get all of the information and agreements uh, before we say, yes, go ahead. Well, I, I, can I, I just think one thing to note is that uh, as far as the Board of Health is concerned, adding the two walls is within the state guide, guide, guidelines. Um, and I can't imagine why there would be an issue seen in, it, in prolonging the outdoor dining as long as possible, considering it is the safest way to protect our guests and our staff members during uh, the pandemic. Um, so uh, obviously, as far as coming to terms with the fire department, you know, we, we won't install a heater until 
we've found some come to some agreement on what you know meets all all of the codes and and that may not happen we may not be able to find a product that does that um and that would be that but um as far okay. as the walls are concerned can i then um suggest that we approve the side curtains dependent on the um, approval of the Board of Health and defer questions of the heat until um, we have more information. Um, so are you making that a motion? Yes. I'm a little fuzzy on that, um, in that <clears throat> I think that, that, would you just repeat that please, Anne? Yeah, I suggest that we vote to approve side curtains at Cala's, um, provided to that the Board of Health uh, concurs. And that the fire chief, I, I would. No, 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 no. We're not going into anything Absolutely. about the heat right now. Right now, we don't know about the heat. I see what you're saying. Just the curtains. Yep. So, so that would delay Carlos being able to implement this for two weeks. Yeah. Until we meet again. No. Okay. They can implement the side curtains. They don't have to implement the heaters. Right. But right. The, but the whole purpose of this is to get the heating system put into place so that they can they can provide more comfortable dining is, well, is six, it, when it's yeah, 62 out right right now the heating system that we've got the fire chief who's is uh, says i would not approve that correct correct all right correct. but when you come up with a heating system that the fire chief says yeah this works he gives his approval if he gives his approval i think we're okay with that we have to rely on his recommendation as to what what is appropriate here from a, a safety and a effectiveness perspective so i think you can just put that corollary on there pen you know it's dependent upon fire chief's uh, approval for the okay i will accept the friendly amendment to say that we will approve the side curtains dependent on and the heat dependent on the recommendations of the Board of Health and the fire inspector. And I would like to further amend that to no more than two walls. Sure. Uh, yeah, I think that's in the law anyway, right. <laughs> well, exactly, but I just want to make sure we put that yeah. in. Yep. I would say that. Okay. I will accept the friendly amendment. All right, is there any further discussion on this? Roll call vote, Mr. Bob McTurner. Yes. Ms. Jakes. Yes. Ms. Harrison. Yes. Mr. Round. Yes. Mr. Bowling votes yes. Um, okay, so uh, Monica and the fire chief will go back and forth on uh, the challenges of commercial heaters. I will be very interested to hear the results in that. Hmm. Uh, and thank you very uh, much for the and support. You're welcome. Uh, mm -hmm. And thank you for um, uh, uh, adapting and working with us on the walkway. We do yep. appreciate it. All right, Chief Cleary, we'll be in touch. Okay. Very good. Take care. You too, Monica. Okay, on to agenda item number five, uh, liaison project updates. Um, uh, there's nothing further from me on the Western Woods right now. Um, I will be trying to send out some material about board training, which I said I would be doing in September before our next meeting. Um, uh, Jeff, uh, open spaces, et cetera. Open Space uh, held um, the first public forum on August, I think it was 26th, Wednesday, last Wednesday in August. And uh, attendance was uh, about 30, 35 people um, at its peak. Um, a presentation was done um, by uh, Courtney Lewis, uh, the regional planner for MAPC. Um, about what the open space and recreation planning involves. 
um, that our current plan is um, scheduled to expire in February, I believe. And, uh, and he went through the whole uh, process that would be done to create a new plan, um, outlining that process for people who were there. Um, this information is up on the uh, OSRP portion of the town website. Um, there is a virtual open house that is still open um, for public commenting. Um, and that will be open until this Friday, 9-11. Um, and there's a, a Google survey that townspeople can take and uh, provide their input in terms of what their priorities are for the open space plan. Um, this process is something that Courtney's done many, many times and, uh, and he's a good leader for it. Um, the next uh, event on the horizon is an advisory board committee meeting later this month. And, um, and uh, then uh, further survey collection. So that's where we are. Uh, if anybody has any questions on any of these items, just uh, uh, jump in. I'm not going to uh, poll everybody for, uh, on them. Um, uh, Becky, on the planning board and the 40R? Nothing. No updates. Okay. And uh, Ann Harrison, uh, I'll kind of uh, speak to, uh, for you. <laughs> We're on Zoom, <laughs> and it seems to be a lot better than um, so far than... Um, <clears throat> Uh, start meeting. Uh, oh. There are a couple of features we may go back and forth about. Um, uh, there's a, a webinar support which allows um, allows for um, panelists to be unmuted and participants to be muted. Um, mm -hmm. So we're gonna. I think what we're gonna do for the time being is um, play with this for a bit and see if it meets our needs in its current form. Um, so far, I like it better. Um, Good. Uh, um, I am now back in the world of being connected to the universe again. Um, and uh, I will figure out some way to test and explore features um, it, of of various meeting types. I think I can get, I can't certainly put together a, a large meeting test, but I can do feature evaluations and I'll get in touch with, oh my God, I've forgotten his name again, um, and see what we can do about uh, making it easier to sign in and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, there, there are a few uh, little oddities that we found along the way. Um, Tiffany, uh, I got this up and running last week. Mm -hmm. um, so we can just correspond uh, yep. on some of the fine points. All right. Um, and if anybody has any comments about the technical aspects of the software, forward them on to Anne and um, mm -hmm. Tiffany. Uh, consent agenda. We have two items. One is confirming the reappointment of the town treasurer, uh, Jen Yaskell. And then the other one is a lot line agreement on Central Pond, clarifying uh, the lot lines uh, in preparation for some of the work that we're doing um, on the Central Street culvert. Uh, does anybody have any questions about the items in the consent agenda? Uh, two questions on the boundary line agreement. Yeah, go ahead. Um, in the first paragraph, um, it says that uh, the owner has an address of 300 Cumming Center Street. Mm -hmm. and I don't think that exists. Um, street should be eliminated from that. Um, unless I'm just ignorant of how that complex gets um, tagged. I, I couldn't find anything that said coming center street, just coming center. Um, 
And then a question about who's responsible for the maintenance of the wall. Is that going to still be, I, I know that when we do the culvert project that that's to address that wall. Um, who's responsible for the, for the maintenance in terms of where this boundary line falls? So this boundary line um, shows that it, it's town ownership of the wall. Okay. So it's our, it's our responsibility. And that, okay. that's consistent with the rest of all the other boundaries on that side of the pond. Good. Um, that the town owned us. Yeah, I, I, I figured as much, but I just wanted to get that clarified. Yeah, no, absolutely. And Greg, I had a question. It, it said that there were um, details of the plans. Did, did I miss the, the, the plans? I didn't see those. We, we got two copies of the agreement, no copies of the plan. Okay. I was just curious about that because I would, you know, oh, thought I'd missed that. Nice. No, okay. I'm sorry. Um, <clears throat> yeah, there should have been a, a, a plot plan included. Greg, this is a, a, a survey, is it, or just a plot plan? Uh, it is a survey. Okay. I have no other questions on that. I have no questions on the consent agreement agenda. Move to accept the consent agenda. Second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor, Mr. Bob Turner. Yes. Mr. Round. Yes. Ms. Harrison. Yes. Ms. Jakes. Yes. Mr. Bowling votes yes. All right, moving on to correspondence. So we have two um, uh, letters from Xfinity. <laughs> they, they're changing things pretty much every two weeks. I know. <clears throat> Um, one on program updates and Internet Essentials information, and one on programming changes. Uh, riveting material. Um, <laughs> I also have a letter um, to, the, to the Board of Selectmen from the Open Space and Rec Committee regarding the powder house access. Um, and uh, we may want to uh, see if a board member wants to uh, volunteer to work with Greg to potentially resolve or at least gather sufficient information to resolve that or try to resolve that um, issue. Uh, see whether or not it needs to be brought back before the um, uh, Board of Selectmen for um, moderation. I'll help out Greg with that. Thank you, John. That would be great. Uh, and then uh, we have a letter from a uh, resident for our information um, on the um, draft by the Citizens Work Group on uh, ADUs. Uh, we've uh, res gotten some feedback back from um, uh, the town planner on that, but there is uh, still some additional information that we really need to mm -hmm. um, hear from the planning board before we um, before I think we need to really uh, weigh in it. So it's mostly uh, for our information. They, they did ask that this come to the board um, uh, and we will uh, may need to respond to it, but we need to get a little bit more information first. Town administrator's report. Yeah, fairly, fairly brief and uh, fairly self-explanatory. Um, you are finally seeing some green on the green. So that is getting very close to being done. Uh, really the last elements uh, finishing up the, the uh, far end behind the church where we're putting in uh, two new handicapped parking spaces and getting the railings on uh, the steps and on the ramp. Um, other than that, things are pretty, pretty, pretty good shape. Uh, and obviously the, um, the honorable memorial uh, we hope we'll start in um, in the not too distant future here this fall to then get that finally, that whole area 
uh, wrapped up uh, before the snow flies. <laughs> so that will <laughs> be good. Uh, long overdue. At, at, at this point, Greg, what's holding that up? Holding up the... The honor roll. Yeah, the receipt of the granite uh, and all the, um, uh, all the writing on the granite. So they ran into a major delay because they closed down the granite quarries um, with COVID. And so there's a, a very large backlog and waiting period uh, for, uh, for the granite. Okay, thank you. Um, making good progress on the uh, water line replacement on Boardman. And as soon as that wraps up for the town end, then the, the uh, homeowners association will follow up with repaving uh, Boardman Avenue. Um, because that is a, a private road, so we're obviously responsible for the water, but not the road itself. Um, so that's moving forward. Um, HVAC system in Town Hall is also progressing well, and um, that project should be wrapping up um, by the end of the month, in September. Um, so in time for the new heating season, which will be good. Um, um, other minor uh, updates uh, that I provided in the memo to you um, on hiring, we, uh, we do have um, uh, a, a job offer for our new assistant accountant, um, waiting to get confirmation on that. And we do have um, the advertisement out for the town clerk position and uh, have uh, received a number of resumes and that continues deadline is uh, I forgot to confirm that uh, with the actual day, a couple, couple of weeks away. So those are the highlights uh, from my report. Uh, obviously, uh, after being away, trying to get unburied <laughs> from, the, uh, <laughs> from all the emails and other uh, issues that came up while I was away. I appreciate people pitching in and helping out uh, while, I, while I was away. Um, so we'll have more for you next time, but that's, uh, that's enough for now. Okay, um, so the only other ad observation I'd make here uh, for this part of the meeting is uh, uh, there will be, I believe, a, a, a 9 11 ceremony uh, at the fire station on Friday. Um, uh, board members uh, uh, typically have uh, gone by there. Um, I will stop by. Um, everybody's going to be course socially distancing um, and uh, uh, if you haven't received it I'll make sure you get um, an email about it okay do you know what time that is uh, I don't know what time they have it scheduled for this year I think we're usually there at 8 30 8 30 right. yeah, a little later I believe 9 45 yeah, okay. <laughs> meeting and the ceremonials start right after the bells ring at 10 o'clock. Okay, I, I will do my best to get there. Okay. Um, Thank okay, you, Todd. So, so the, um, there's nothing left in our open um, uh, part of this meeting, we are going to be going into an executive session um, with the finance committee. Uh, so if nobody else has any other further comments, I am going to move that we go to executive session, not to return to open session. Under Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A6, uh, to consider the purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real estate if the chair so declares that an opening meeting may have a detrimental effect on the negotiating position of the public body. May I get a second? Second. Uh, roll call vote, Mr. Bodmer Turner. Yes. Ms. Jakes. Yes. Ms. Harrison. Yes. Mr. Round. Yes. Mr. Bowling votes yes. Now, um, uh, we are going to use the Zoom breakout rooms for this. And I'm 
going to move um, the appropriate board members um, over into that um, breakout room. Uh, uh, other members of the public who remain behind will be um, you know, freely able to talk to each other and we will not be returning to open session. Um, uh, and I will ask that if any of the finance committee members are on the phone as opposed to sign in through the um, uh, Zoom uh, application, could you please speak up and let me know? Yep. Hey, Eli, this is Mike. I'm on phone, not Zoom. Okay. What's the last four digits? Uh, 7698. Gotcha. Okay. I'll make sure I got you. Um, Eli, you. if you'll move me. Gail. Gail. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Uh, let's see, folks. Here we go. Manually. Two. Here we go. Good. Seven, six, nine, eight. Ann Harrison, Randy Oldman, Becky, Gene Hodes, Greg, uh, Jeff, Markwell, Mark Creighton, Tony Samosh. All right. Okay, breakout rooms are in progress. And I believe that we will be ceasing recording now.